Bucking the Sarge, 2004, a young adult novel by Christopher Paul Curtis, delves into themes of greed, race, and the American dream. The book has received 11 awards, including the ALA Best Books for Young Adults, ALA Notable Children's Book, Golden Kite Award for Fiction, and Booklist Children's Editor's Choice. Like many of Curtis's works, Bucking the Sarge is set in Flint, Michigan, the author's hometown. The story follows 15-year-old Luther T. Farrell as he plots his escape from Flint and his slumlord mother, known as the Sarge. The novel opens with Luther and his best friend Sparky reflecting on their lives. Luther's mother has built a profitable empire through insurance fraud, loan sharking, and managing slum properties and group homes, including the Happy Neighbor Group Home for Men, which Luther has overseen for two years. He dedicates long hours outside of school to save money for college, where he hopes to study philosophy. In contrast, Sparky, whose father was a firefighter who died, struggles with poverty. He lacks a job, a solid school record, or a clear plan for his future. His nickname comes from his frequent visits to his father's old fire station, where the firefighters give him small jobs and make him feel welcome. With the science fair approaching, Luther begins scheming for a third consecutive victory. He's determined to create a project that will outshine his competitors, especially Shayla, the girl he admires from a distance, who is eager to win after placing second the previous year. Meanwhile, Luther juggles his responsibilities at home, helping with his mother's properties and caring for residents at the Happy Neighbor Group home. One of his duties includes cleaning out homes after Sarge evicts tenants. During one of these visits, he encounters a massive rat with a tail as thick as a finger and beady, marble-sized eyes. On another occasion, he witnesses the eviction of his classmate Bo Travis and his family from one of Sarge's properties. Bo, a quiet student who previously placed third in the science fair, is struggling to get by. Luther suspects that someone indebted to Sarge manipulated the eviction notice timeline, giving the family only two days instead of the legally required 60. Inside the house, Luther discovers the family has endured a winter without electricity, heat, or running water, surviving on little more than a box of cornflakes. In what Sarge deems an irrational, inappropriate episode of misplaced sensitivity, Luther takes Bo's little sister's report cards and artwork, later tracking Bo down at work to return them after he stops attending school. Sarge's influence pervades Flint, with many owing her favors, including connections in the office of the Secretary of State. This is how Luther acquires a fake license at the age of 13, allowing him to drive the group home bus. The license falsely states he is 18, and Sarge has forged documents to support the deception. She also promises to pay him for his work, depositing the funds into an education account to help him avoid student loans when he goes to college. In Chapter 8, Sarge delivers a revealing speech about her motivations for her actions. She addresses the racial inequalities in America, highlighting the cruel reality of telling a black child they must work twice as hard to be considered half as good. In Sarge's view, this belief only sets children up for failure. She reflects on her early experiences teaching at a private school in New York, where her students came from affluent families, Fortune 500 executives, politicians, and actors. During an art class one day, young Sarge realizes that many of these children's families own the masterpieces they study, including works by Picasso and Rembrandt. Returning to her tiny apartment adorned with inexpensive art prints, she ponders when she will earn enough to compete with families who can afford to send their children to exclusive boarding schools with $25,000 annual tuition fees. Sarge recognizes that there is nothing inherently special about these privileged children. They have simply been conditioned to expect wealth from an early age. Realizing that following the conventional corporate path would never lead her to riches, she resolves to work hard, save her money, and launch her own businesses. If wealthy white people can exploit the system to their advantage, she decides she will do the same, and it pays off. As the science fair approaches, Luther ties for first place with Shayla for his intricately researched project on lead paint poisoning. The event is so impressive that local television crews are invited to film the results. However, midway through the fair, Luther realizes the chilling truth. 
His mother has used lead paint in all her properties. She purchased it cheaply after it was banned and opted not to remove it. The fallout from this revelation could ruin her reputation, leading to fines and potentially prison time. Sarge's evil empire would be in jeopardy. Furious, Sarge gives Luther four days to pack his belongings and leave while she is away on a business trip. Determined to take revenge before his departure, Luther heads to the bank, only to discover that instead of the expected $92,000 in his education fund, there is only $900. In a bold move, he accesses Sarge's bank security box, copies all her records for his protection, sells the group home bus, and signs Sarge's boyfriend's car over to himself, bringing his total assets to the amount he believes his education fund should have held. With the help of Chester X, his elderly roommate who conned his way into the group home with forged documents, Luther takes the money and the car, setting off for Florida to start anew, with Sparky planning to join them in a few months. The book concludes with a set of eight discussion questions and an interview with the author. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe. Thank you.